Hello, welcome to Drawing Me Out with Laszlo Fontaine. Laszlo quit the show suddenly to go off with a new group of friends and uh, do a show, a competing show called The Laszlo Chronicles. Very good title. Uh, but I am the last second replacement, Bill Willingham, uh, ready to take your questions. Uh, this will be part two of uh, two back-to-back -back, uh question taking episodes uh and as always in the in the he thinks he's actually in control of this seat is our pal brad tompty say hello brad what really upsets me is the fact that i introduced laszlo to that guy ah, well so it's my fair, fault if you look at it that way fair weather friends i'm telling you, what you say? so yeah we've got a few uh a few more questions that we didn't quite get to last time so if you're if you're game i'm just going to start firing them at you sure Hit okay me. one of the most popular episodes that we've done so far was about your uh your tsr career and the main thing that came from that is literally how did you get started at tsr how did you get in the door there to to get into the art department the the background to that is kind of interesting the actual mechanics of getting the job uh, are not. Uh, the background is that uh, I played a lot of uh, Dungeons and Dragons in the army. Um, this was during a time when we were tower guards at a nuclear site, uh, which sounds interesting, uh, but mostly it's not because uh, you sit in towers or uh, I work the front room. So you sit in the front room uh, and watch grass grow while being prepared to shoot anyone who shows up and tries to get the nukes in the bunkers that are inside the X area you're guarding. We had 12-hour shifts, and we had um, eight of those in a row before we got four days off. Uh, during uh, eight uh 12-hour shifts, you can really go crazy. They didn't let you read books because that took your attention off the uh, clear area, the grass. Um, so you couldn't do much but watch. However, we were allowed to talk to each other over our tower telephones, uh, and so we played D&D. &D. We played Dungeons & Dragons over the phone. Uh, as the front room guy, I ran the game. We hooked up all the towers, and... Uh, you have a dozen people playing D and D for twelve hours uh, day in day out, uh, and then sometimes we played during our off time too, when we should be sleeping. Then on our days off, we got together in one of the rec rooms of the barracks and played more. Once we rented the Frankenstein Castle before they uh, restored it, uh, it was very cheap at the time. It was a, basically one tower of it left to camp out, eat sea rations, and uh, play D and D. Uh, for a year, we played a lot of D&D. &D. Uh, when I finally did get a job at TSR, everyone, every new hire then got a 30-minute uh, interview with Gary Gygax. And he asked if there's any questions. And the questions I had were, um, you've railed in the Dungeon Magazine that uh, you've run the longest running campaign and your players are only seventh level. So anyone who's higher than, than seventh level uh, must be cheating, must be Monty Hall Dungeon Masters. And uh, I ran the game, uh, Mike Center ran the game, and uh, uh, friend Ed Beck, we had a, a kind of triumvirate uh, of uh, tag team uh, Dungeon Masters. We were not Monty Hall Dungeon Masters, and yet all of our characters were up about 20th level, and I couldn't understand what we were doing wrong, so I asked him. And he questioned me a bit, and he found out that we played D&D &D constantly, around the clock. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had um like four day sessions where uh someone would be running the game at all times and we had our sleeping bags in the rec room we would you know get naps eat join the game get kicked out of the game for another group you know whatever around the clock we played a lot of D. &D. uh so gary said to me well that explains it we play once a week for a few hours on the the night that we play that's it. You guys may have played more Dungeons and Dragons than any human beings in history. That made me feel pretty good and sort of like, oh my God, I should have had a life. Um, <laughs> I think that record probably doesn't hold up. For one thing, uh, we had a solid year of it, jam-packed, a little more than a year. 
people have been doing this for 40 years now in long running games. So our, our record fell long ago. Anyway, so, you, I, I interrupted you. What were you no, saying? That's all right. The, uh, the next question kind of, you had kind of answered it as well. So you were a fan and player then before you got to TSR, you, you played the heck out of that game. Uh, yes. And then after you got in there, was working there a good experience? Did you enjoy it given your, you know, your knowledge of the, the game going into it? Um, sort of. At the time, I didn't appreciate it as much because uh, I started in the art department with one foot already out the door. I intended to draw comics, and I let them know that I was going to quit and draw comics at some point when I became uh, accepted into the comics business. So I don't think I treasured it as much as I look back nostalgically on it now. Yeah, I got the uh, the job just because there was an ad in one of the Dun uh, Dragon magazines. Uh, for a new artist, and I applied, sent in my stuff, and he said, come to Lake Geneva and, and work. When I did come to Lake Geneva, then he said that the, the job he offered me is, well, well, it's between you and one other artist, and then we had to spend a week competing for it. But that's that's another story. Yeah, I mostly enjoyed the time. I, I enjoyed the hell out of the people, mostly. But uh, as soon as I started getting some uh, favorable response from the comics publishers, I was out the door. I might have, in looking back, I might have wanted to stay longer. Was it uh, in the in the environment? Was it like a bullpen environment? Did you have a lot of people around you? Did you have your own drawing table just like off in a corner? How was it set up? Uh, the art department was on the second floor, just above the Dungeon Hobby Shop in downtown Lake Geneva. The art department was a section of offices down a long corridor. Uh, at the far end uh, was Dave Sutherland in his very tiny office, but it was a closed, lockable office. He was the art director. Then in the next office, which was a bigger space, were two artists, uh, Jim Rosloff, the assistant art director, and Errol Otis, the star of the art department. And they filled up these spaces as people were hired. So in the next office in a row, and these were uh, um, all down one corridor, in the next office in a row were the next two hires, uh, Jeff D., whom we've spoke of many times, and Dave LaForce. Uh, David S. LaForce signed his uh, art DSL, so he got the nickname Diesel. Still call him that today. Uh, and that filled up that uh, office. And then there was a new, uh, another office just waiting, and that's when I was hired. So when I was hired, I got my own office art table, nice view out the window, my office was also used as the mail collection spot, so the uh, inner office mail between us and the uh, and the business end of things, which is on the other end of town, uh, would be collected in my office. And I only call attention to that because uh, the second cutest girl in the world, I say second just so that she doesn't get a big head, uh, would be sent over once a day from the uh, uh, main office to collect the mail, and I got to, to chat her up every time she visited. Uh, the problem with having my own office with doors and, and creaky floors so that I always had warning when someone was coming uh, was that I'd just gotten out of the Army where my sleep-wake schedule was so screwed up because uh, uh, I would often work nights in the military police and sleep during the days. Anyway, I could not stay awake during the daytime to save my life for the longest time uh, and there wasn't a lot of direct supervision. We were given an assignment, and if we handed it in at a reasonable time, no one would come looking for me. As a result, I did some sleeping at that art table like you would not believe. It was did that end up uh, affecting you to the for your career today? Then, so you're you know you're sitting there trying to crank out a project, and just suddenly your head hits the pencil. Uh, not anymore. Uh, sleeping sitting up is something I no longer can do. Uh, back in the army, it was uh, it was a skill set everybody had. Uh, whether back in the towers when we were watching the grass grow, uh, we would sit in our chairs and sleep. Um, and that's how safe your nukes were, by the way. Uh, or on patrol, uh, you and your partner would sit in your car just like uh, real cops pull over somewhere and sleep. Uh, we did a lot of sleeping setting up, so I had that skill set. I no longer do. Uh, I have to be prone and comfortable uh, in order to sleep anymore. Sitting at an art table, I am cursed or blessed. You choose to be wide awake. All right. Uh, one last D&D &D question, then we'll move on. Um, okay. 
you had mentioned before about the uh, the interest in finishing the old D and D comic ad series you were doing. Uh, sure. Any progress on that? Anything going on? Uh, none whatsoever. There was a uh, uh, I put out a question for anyone that worked at uh, Wizards of the Coast that can put me in touch with the big wigs to get in touch with me so that I could uh, bounce my ideas off them. The one person who seemed to be a mover and a shaker there, I will not name him by name set up a call where I could tell him my ideas. And he said, well, in order for me to take this to my boss, um, I know what they're going to ask for. You're going to have to do this uh, working for us, paid a page rate or a salary. We would own everything. We'd own the art. We'd own this. We'd own that. And we'd have to do it in coordination with this and this and this and this and this. And he had a long list. And I said, yeah, I don't do that anymore. That was that was the uh, deal back in the old TSR days, and I don't have to take bad deals like that. You do not get the art. You do not get to dictate the story. Um, and I don't think you could afford my page rate. So, no. And he goes, okay, I probably can't take this to her. I, I never knew who the boss was that he was talking to. Uh, I go, all right. Oh, sorry, it didn't work out. That is the state of it now. The ball's in their court, but I don't think I'll be hearing from them. Okay, well that's uh, that's unfortunate because that was a fun episode and everyone seemed to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's talk Shadow Pact for a second. Uh, okay, whose idea was it to choose the Shadow Pact cast and all the cameos who showed up? Basically, uh, was this a team you put together? Someone said, "Hey, we need a team. Here's who we want you to use." How did that work? Okay, well I had had the group name Shadow Pact for a long time. The first time I used it was um, back in the TSR days. We would do these big miniatures battles that would take a couple of days uh they were called interplaners and the idea was everyone in the game creates an entire army of some group of science fiction fantasy monsters what whatever you can think of at one point a uh, guy paul ritchie had the captain and his team of kangaroos um that's how silly it got at some point uh, but one time I fielded a group of knights called the uh, the Knights of Shadow Pact. I thought that was a very cool name uh, to compete in the interplaner and came close to being on the winning team that time. Uh, not that there's any uh, necessary uh, uh, cause and effect there. That's the first time I used that name. The next time I tried to use it was bouncing an idea of Vertigo when, when Karen Berger says, take all the Vertigo characters and do something with them. And I said, okay, we'll make a team called Shadow Pact. And Karen said, oh, no, I don't want teams. I go, well, <laughs> they don't have to call themselves a team. But anyway, that was killed. And, uh, and then one day, uh, Jeff Johns, who was kind of running the creative side of uh, DC at the time, and Dan DiDio, who was officially running it, uh, came and said, we're doing these big um, uh, special a series big event and one quarter of that is going to be the magic side and you're going to write it i get okay that would have been and day of vengeance, he goes right? day of vengeance uh okay. they gave me they gave me the title uh it's going to be called day of vengeance okay it's going to be the specter wigging out okay other than that what can you come up with and i go well i could assemble a team of um magic type characters some of the ones that aren't used very much uh to go against them they go, that sounds good. Yeah, but uh, Karen Berger didn't like it and didn't like the name Shadow Pact and all this kind of stuff. And Dandy Deal says, we love teams over here at the DCU. <laughs> and we love the name Shadow Pact. It's a go. Uh, so Dave Vengeance uh, featured a team called the Shadow Pact. Uh, I assembled the team out of uh, uh, obscure and esoteric characters that I wanted to use, with the exception that Dan DiDio said, any way you can get Detective Chimp in there. My first response was, well, he doesn't really fit. He doesn't really fit. A little light goes on over my head. and I go, you're damn right he can be in there. So including Detective Chimp in this uh, group of weirdos uh, was his idea. Uh, the execution of it, though, I will take all the credit for. So it was my idea to cast Shadow Pact, with the exception of Detective Chimp. Uh, Shadow Pact, the team name, was mine. And uh, I believe the follow-up question is um, the cameos, the all the other uh, uh, supernatural characters that are in the bar, who's, who packed that list. And it was me, because that was the master list of everyone who was possibly going to be in the team. And then I wintered it down to the ones I wanted to use. 
Um, did you hear that beep? I did hear that beep. That means we're out of time, so we're going to take one more question. Okay. Uh, the last question then, I think. It's uh, someone was asking about your experiences working with Telltale on The Wolf Among Us, basically adopting one of your properties, something you created, into a video game. The previous experience was okay, with the exception of um, I was hired to be a continuity cop uh, to keep them on track and make sure that they don't do things that violate the game. Uh, the problem is with that is that all the writers uh, were so well steeped in things fables that I had to correct almost nothing. I think at one point I had to remind them that Bigby doesn't know how to drive. Um, and the one thing that got by me, the one thing I wish I corrected was that uh, they kind of made Snow White a bleeding heart. And uh, I would have said next to that if I'd have been aware of it. Uh, so mostly it was good. Uh, this next time around, it's a new group of people. They haven't even bothered to contact me again. They're dead to me, uh, so I can't say there's much experience at all. Okay, well, then that's where we'll leave it. If you guys have more questions, be sure and fire those off in the comments down below. We we touch base on those and, and reach out every few episodes to, to answer them for you. Bill, what do you got? Anything else? No, I, I get the feeling that uh, that you're a little sad that we ended on such a down note. Um, <laughs> it kind of did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is generally a happy place. Um, uh, no, it is. That's that's much. a no small uh, no small part to the folks who uh, who tune in every week and and watch and listen for us. I see. Yeah, we hope to make you happier having experienced this than not. Uh, maybe sometimes we succeed. Uh, thank you very much for listening in. Uh, please uh, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies, uh, tell your parents this is what you're actually doing with your time. Um, <laughs> Mom, I'm in here watching, throwing me out. Don't tell your boss that instead of doing his work, this is what you're actually doing with your time. Uh, unless you think he will also subscribe. That's it. Uh, next week we will have uh, a subject about something... Uh, uh, that isn't questions. Awesome. All right. Well, then we'll see everyone next time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. It is now recording.